Alright, so I want to talk about open world games. First, I feel like I should at least roughly define what an open world game is. <clears throat> so, according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, an open world game is... <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, this isn't a high school English paper. I'm just going to try and roughly define this the best I can. So, basically what I consider an open world game is any game with a world map that you can freely explore and go do whatever you want, whenever you want, regardless of how difficult it may be to do. There are lots of games that act like they're open world, but they're not traditionally open world, so I'm really not going to be talking about those. No, what I want to talk about are The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wilds or the Red Dead Redemption 2s. Now those? Those are open world games. I don't know if this is just me, but when I see a new game reveal trailer and the game is advertising itself to be open world, I am immediately way more invested and interested in that game. I can't tell you what it is, just for me personally, I love open world games. Or at least games with open world mechanics. Pokemon Sword and Shield had the wild area in it, and while small compared to the rest of the game, it was my favorite part. Mostly because you had this larger area full of just tall grass that all you'd do is run around and tackle at your own pace in any way that you wanted to. And with the recent announcement of the next games in the series, Scarlet and Violet, they're said to be the first truly open world Pokemon games. Needless to say, I am extremely excited for those. There is so much potential with open world games. I mean, just look at Minecraft from even just a surface level. And it is a game that dumps you into an expansive, randomly generated open world that leaves you with near infinite possibilities. You're not going to get near that level of creativity and freedom with like a platformer, for example. Okay, maybe with Mario Maker, but you get the point. There is a lot that you can do and take advantage of with having an open world in your game. However, this can turn some people away from your game because of how overwhelming it may seem. I know not everyone enjoys having a lot of freedom in their video games, which is fine, but for us true gamers, this is a selling point. My life's purpose is to collect all 900 of the Korok seeds in Breath of the Wild just to receive a literal piece of poop. But it's fine because it's golden. GTA 5, Minecraft, Stardew Valley, Rust, Subnautica, Terraria, and No Man's Sky, just to name a few well-known open world games. All of these games and more could give players such a unique experience that almost any other genre of video games simply could not. I mean, it truly is a special day when I can just walk into a strip club and cleanse the sinful axe away by unloading an entire magazine round into the place. And in GTA 5, I can do just that. If I ever want to be reminded that I am irrationally afraid of large open bodies of water because you never know what creature could be lurking around there with you, Subnautica has my back. When my god complex is acting up and I simply just want to travel the cosmos and spread my will and impose my presence, I've got a game just for that. Spore. What, did you think I was going to say No Man's Sky? Yeah, I don't own that game, so Spore is kind of the best I got to scratch that very random and particular gaming itch. Suffice to say, there is almost definitely a game in this genre that can give you whatever experience you were wanting. But going back to GTA 5, I will admit that I was extremely late to experiencing this game. The first time I bought and played GTA 5 was barely even a year ago, but when I started playing, I instantly fell in love with just how fun this game is. Obviously, I had always heard how fun this game was, but by the time I was old enough to truly appreciate and play a GTA game, I told myself I would just wait for GTA 6 and jump in with that game's launch. But I soon realized that the heat death of the universe would come sooner than that game's release, so here I am finally owning only the second best selling game of all time. The open world atmosphere and sandbox elements that this game offers are refreshingly unique compared to other games that try to emulate this style of gameplay. Just getting to drive around a fairly large world and interact with tons of NPCs and environments is so fun. But before I get too far ahead of myself, let me just admit that when I think of GTA 5, I almost exclusively think of online mode. It's exactly the same map as in the story mode, except you get your own custom character to run around as, and there's a ton of things to do. It's just so much fun. It's just straight up good video gaming fun at its core. I can't tell you exactly what makes GTA 5 online so good, except that it just simply is. Especially if you get a couple of friends together and play online with them, it just gets exponentially better. But bringing this back to open world games, GTA 5 just gets so much right. There's the previously mentioned large map that you can freely explore and find secrets all over, the custom characters that you can pour so much player input into, and virtually no objectives. It is just what you want to do when you want to do it. I mean, yeah, in terms of objectives, there is the heist that you could do, but they're not necessarily something you have to do, but they are still fun. For me, my favorite thing to do is just drive around and try and come up with the most outlandish things to do that you just couldn't do in any other video game. Try to find new hidden things in each new area, new secret paths to drive on, stunt jumps to attempt, 
It's almost always something new when you go and visit or even revisit an area on the map. But well, before this turns into me just sucking up to an obviously proven great game, another amazing example of an open world game is Subnautica. This was a game that caught me pretty off guard when I first played it. Once again, this was something that I'd heard lots of great things about, but never expected to enjoy it as much as I did. I remember I got this game right before spring break one year in high school, and so during the break, I started and completely played through the entirety of Subnautica to 100%. I'm pretty sure I dumped nearly 40 hours into that game just that week. The story is what pushes the gameplay forward, and it's what hooked me initially, and kept me playing. But a good story isn't enough to save a bad game. But fortunately, Subnautica is really fun to play. The slow progression towards upgrading all your gear and vehicles and bases with the resources that you find is very satisfying. And the base building mechanics are just fun to play with as well. I loved getting to have my base welcome me every time I entered it. Welcome aboard, Captain. I live for that and getting to build a fish tank in my base that had miniature versions of the little sea creatures that you can find in the ocean, that's just so cool. I was sad to finish the game because once you finish the story, there's really not much incentive to continue playing. Which is disappointing because the game is so fun to play. When they announced a sequel for the game, I was so hyped and now that the game is finally out of early access and the story is completed, I've gone back and started replaying through that and remembering just how much I initially loved the original game. If you have not played Subnautica, I mean, what are you doing? Go out and play these games, they are genuinely so fun and the stories are great. Highly recommend. Now, I could sit here and keep listing off great examples of open world games all day, but I want to take a step back and really just talk about what makes an open world so good in my opinion. So far from just the two examples I went into depth about, I'm sure that it's obvious that the world that the game is in is pretty important. And while you may have thought this was going to be a break from me sucking up to an amazing open world games, you were wrong. This is actually just an elaborate segue to throw you off guard before going right back into talking about specific games. So, uh, I'm almost scared to even touch this game just from how easily you can get sucked into its world and environment. But Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the best open world games you could ever possibly play. Everyone that I have talked to about this game always brings up something crazy and specific and fun that they found just randomly while exploring the map. And I think that speaks volumes enough for just how fun and well made this world is. It feels less like a video game map and more like an actual living, breathing world that people exist in and live their lives. It is crazy just how far the developers at Rockstar went into making this world feel so alive and detailed. There are details that mimic things in real life that you would never think of that are just coded and worked into this map. It is insane. It's little things like this that really just bring together the world and make it something completely special and unique. Okay, but for real this time, what makes an open world game so good? The gameplay itself, of course, I mean, that's an obvious no-brainer. I've played a couple of open world games before where even though the world is really good, detailed, and enjoyable, I have lost interest in the game because it just wasn't that fun to play, or the mechanics were boring. This is probably an unpopular opinion, and if so, I hate myself too for having it. Like what am I, cringe? Yeah, probably. But I'm just gonna say it, I don't really find Valheim to have that fun of a gameplay cycle. The world is good, don't get me wrong, I really do enjoy the world and atmosphere of this game. And it is really fun to explore, especially when you get the boats and you can cross the ocean and you have to live with the constant threat of the wind changing or a sea dragon attacking you. But the gameplay is just way too slow for me. Valheim has been compared to Terraria in times and how progression works in that game. And I agree, both games do have very similar progression systems and that is what initially got me so interested in Valheim. But in Valheim, the progression is so much slower and not as satisfying as in Terraria. In Terraria, there's just so much new levels that you can progress through, even if it's just by a tiny bit. But in Valheim, it feels like you have to put so much work in just to get like a little bit better of a sword, and it just, the payoff in the end doesn't feel as good. And I even played Valheim in co-op, so the progression was quicker than if I was doing it all by myself, so if that says just how slow this game feels, I, I don't know what would. But yeah, I just think that what Relogic has done with Terraria is much better than what Valheim has going on. I mean, there could be a bit of bias here. I've played through Terraria like five or six times now and I've barely even gotten past the second boss in Valheim, so uh, yeah, there's that. Now don't get me wrong though, I still love Valheim and enjoy playing it, I mean it's one of my top games on Steam, 
but I get to a point after playing for a while where I just get really bored of playing. And because even though I'm making progress and gathering resources, it starts to feel like I haven't made any progress at all. This could just be a me thing, or maybe I'm just bad at the game. It's probably the second option. So yeah, I think Valheim is a really good example for what I mean by a game being open world, but maybe not having the best mechanics to play through it with. I think another thing that can really make or break an open world game is the NPCs and like interactions that you can have within that game. I mean, we've all played one of those games where you just walk around and it feels empty. It's really hard to put a finger on, but something's off. But then you play those games like GTA where there's NPCs all over the place and it feels so lively and interactive. It's just the little things once again that really make these games work. And while I can continue to get away with talking about open world games, one last game that I really want to talk about while on the subject is Satisfactory. I have had plenty of games where I went into them expecting them to be good and for me to have a good time playing them. I mean, I already talked about how Subnautica caught me off guard with how good it was, but when I say that Satisfactory caught me off guard, this game completely caught me by surprise. I, of course, expected to have a decent amount of fun with this game and sink a few hours into it, but next thing I know, I have lost literal weeks of my life to this game. So if you aren't completely aware of what Satisfactory is as a game, it is a tycoon survival game where you just set up factories around a massive world and slowly upgrade through the progression tiers. At its core, it's nothing too complicated. Initially, I was interested in this game because it reminded me of the old tycoon games I would play on Roblox as a kid. But since this is an actual game and not a Roblox creation, it is so much better than anything I ever played as a kid. I was worried that the further into the game you got, it would start to become laggy with just how large the world is and how many moving components there are. But the game runs and looks amazing the entire time. And while talking about how good this game looks, there are multiple different places that you can choose to spawn in when you start a game, and no matter where you pick, there will always be a unique and beautiful area of the map with its own advantages. I will say, however, the world does feel a little empty at times, especially because there's very few animal types and enemies. But that is okay in this case, since the game's focus isn't really on any sort of combat. I mean, most of the time you hardly ever notice this because you're surrounded by your massive factories, so the lack of having a ton of creature variety is almost not an issue at all. It's not really until you go out exploring that you realize, yep, yeah, there is only three or four different animals you can run into. But just having this large, beautiful, expansive world to pretty much do whatever you want in is just so fun. Pretty much the only goal that you'll have in this game is one that just consistently exists throughout the entire time playing, and that's simply just to keep gathering resources so you can fill out the progress trees in the game. You can go about this however you want, you could build a ton of micro factories around the map, or you could build one large factory hub that everything leads into, and either way is completely fine depending on how you want to play the game. The first time I played through this game, I made this like silo barn that had a ton of storage units, and out the back would be all the conveyor belts with the resources. I pretty much took inspiration from the way that like a bunch of USB cables and HDMIs plug into a computer, so I thought it turned out looking really cool and it is something that I'm very happy that I did. If you even have the slightest interest in tycoon games or factory games and for some whatever reason haven't played Satisfactory yet, please, I am begging you, go out and get and play this game. It is 100% worth it and I almost guarantee you will enjoy this. Heck, even if you're really not into those type of games, I mean honestly, I really wasn't besides yeah, the Roblox games, but those hardly count. I feel like anyone would enjoy this game. Please, seriously, go get this game. It is amazing. I can't sell you enough on this. It is really good. Just trust me. And if you don't like it, I don't know, I guess hate me. But regardless of any of my opinions on these games, I am sure that anybody would be able to find a game in this genre that they enjoy, even if they're not necessarily a gamer. It just depends on what game grabs you and hooks you in with its world and or mechanics. Whether that be a free-roaming sandbox game with tons of freedom, an exploration RPG game with a large detailed map, or even an online PvP game with player built bases all over the map. There is almost certainly a game for you. And who knows, maybe that game's mechanic or gameplay that grabs you is being able to shoot up a strip club. Hey, don't judge, teach their own. <laughs>